Henry I founded Reading Abbey in 1121. Um, he had intended it to be his memorial and his burial place. And as such, he endowed it with land, power, um, the abbot could strike his own coins, had the right to hold fairs. He was Lord of Reading. And what we can see today is that Henry spared no expense in building this abbey. Stone, some of the best stone was brought from Caen in France. And it's quite interesting looking at some of these carved stones like this one. This is a capital um, on top of a column. And normally, this decorated part would be one piece of stone and the square slab on the top, holding the springer from which the arch sprang, would be a separate piece of stone. But these capitals here in, from Reading Abbey are all made of one block of stone. And so he had to buy a big block of stone and then he wasted a great chunk of it while all this part was, was cut away. The most damaged capital in the collection is actually of huge importance for anybody studying the Virgin Mary. Um, this is a capital um, showing the coronation of the Virgin and is the earliest surviving example. The last abbot was executed for treason because he refused to accept that the king was head of the church in England because this was a time when the church in England under Henry VIII split from the church in Rome. And this is why the Reading Abbey was dissolved by Henry VIII. Many of the buildings after the dissolution stood for a while, but under the reign of his son, Edward, um, the demolition of the church and the cloisters began, and cartloads of stone were sold to the people who were repairing St. Mary's Church to repair the church tower. Um, cartloads of the really highly decorative stone um, which formed the, the capitals in the cloisters, um, were taken up and down river to all sorts of other places. And we've been gathering up, if you like, as many of the highly carved pieces of stonework as we can into the collection. And some of these have come to us from as far afield as Avebury. We're now standing in the public area of Reading Abbey. The gateway that you can see over there would have separated this public area from the private area. The area where the monks lived, where the abbot had his house and where they took important visitors like the king. The front of the abbey church would have absolutely dominated the whole area. Where Henry I's memorial cross is over there, that is very close to the northwest corner of the west front of the church. And if you want to think about what that church would have looked like, all you need to do is look over there at the St. James's Church, which is um, a Catholic church built by the architect Pugin in 1840. And it's very unusual architectural style for Pugin. He went in for a much less plain style. And we think that he probably designed St. James's Church to fit in with the fact that it was in the middle of a Norman Abbey precinct. Right, I'm now standing in one of the cloister walkways and if I were a medieval monk I would have come down from the dormitory, walked up the cloister walkway and into the abbey church through that arch up there. Well we're now standing in the chapter house which is where the abbot would have met really important visitors and again you can see here the marks in the walls from which the blocks of ashlar have been removed so this would have been a really smooth um, stone wall um, with just this rubble in the middle um, sandwiched between um, two walls of smooth stone. Now on the wall here we have got a plaque um, commemorating the round Summer is a Coming In which is one of the earliest um, rounds known and was written down in Reading Abbey. As well as standing on an important medieval site we have more recent history all around us both around us and beneath us. Um, over here is Reading Jail, where Oscar Wilde was imprisoned, and on his release he wrote the Ballad of Reading Jail. And beneath my feet is a World War II air raid shelter, which we rediscovered when the um, restoration of the Forbury Gardens took place. And it was apparently dug for the children of St James's Catholic Church School. And 
I took a group of people on a walk on one occasion and one of them remembered being brought down here for a practice during the Second World War.